Garen Bombings from Bonfire Sports in Winnipeg. He's football first, but he covers the Jets too for NHL.com. Hey, Bomber, I like the hair. Are you growing it out or something? Or do I normally see you wearing a toque? Why does your hair look no longer than normal? Yeah, you know us Prairie Boys. We uh we, we revel in the toques ten months of the year. But uh yeah, it's summertime. Right. It's like it was thirty five degrees in Winnipeg yesterday and you know, a little cooler today, which is nice, but uh just kind of letting it all breathe, Roddy. Letting it flow. I like it. I like it. You don't like the bombers at 0 3, nor does your <laughs> nor does your town. Everybody seems a little stunned right now. What's going on? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a bit of a wild one. Uh, you know, I don't even know where to start. The offense has not been good. Like, is this Zach Kolaris now? I can't imagine. No touchdowns through three games. He's thrown a handful of picks, including a couple pretty bad ones that are definitely on him. The defense got shredded by Vernon Adams Jr. to the tune of 500 yards last week in their third straight loss and second at home. They were 8-1 and one on home field last year. New turf and new stadium name at the former um, uh, ballpark. I guess, yeah, you know, it's Princess Auto Stadium now. I can't even, IG Field it used to be. See, I'm, I'm you know, yeah. can't even remember. Everything's changed and everything looks so different. But uh, I don't know, Roddy, what, what am I going to tell you? I'm going to tell you that the Blue Bombers are, are staying on message. They're keeping that Mike O'Shea stoicism, right? They're not listening to any of the outside noise. They're not getting involved in the bulletin board talk because they're number nine in the power rankings or anything like that. They just go to work every single day. It's been the Mike O'Shea mantra since day one in 2013, but it was the season before Mike O'Shea took over, 2012, the last time this team started a season 0-3. Uh, well, I'm going to throw this out there. Like Bomber fans, shout out Rob in Las Vegas who watches this show every day. He says, can in injuries be used as, as an excuse? How do you feel about that? Is that valid? An, an excuse, no. Absolutely not. The, the team won't admit that. I, I won't admit that. I'm a football purist. You know, I watch every single brand there is. I call junior games here uh, in Winnipeg for the rifles. Uh, you know, I, I grew up playing the game. Injuries should never, ever be an excuse. The quarterback is healthy. The offensive line is healthy. The running back is healthy. The reigning West Division MOP. Uh, yeah, injuries to Dalton Schoen and Kenny Lawler, both of them on the six-game injury list. Carrick Wheatfall, who had a 111-yard game in his CFL debut in Week 2. He's now injured. We don't know how long he's going to be. There's some guys on the D-line that are nicked up, but Willie Jefferson's healthy. Adam Big Hill and Kyrie Wilson in the linebacking core, they're good to go. Dietrich Nichols, who for my money, maybe the best DB in the CFL today, uh, missed last week, but he looks good to go this week. They got some young guys in the back end, but Brandon Alexander's been able to play in all the games. They're veteran safety. Ex injury should not be an excuse for any football team. I don't think they should be an excuse for this football team. They just need to play a whole lot better than they have. I don't buy it either. I'm just for any team or any sport. I'm just passing it along. Now, you can make a case for any game to be the game of the week. Uh, for me, it's Co my Cody and Montreal at Toronto, but Winnipeg at Calgary, is pretty, it, it's very big. It's a West Division collision, man. What's your preview of this one at McMahon on Saturday? Yeah, I, I think I'd go with you and, and say uh, montreal Toronto is probably your, your CFL game of the week. I'm still curious about the Edmonton Elks. Uh, how do I see Winnipeg-Calgary <laughs> shaking out? I mean, Stamps are coming off a bye. Winnipeg losing, I would say, their most impactful receiver, who is, you know, Dalton Schoen, both a possession guy, that reliable person that Zach Kolaris has always gone to in huge quantity. He's now out of the lineup, and um, the Stamps are going to be rested. Winnipeg is desperate. But I think the Calgary Stampeders are a lot better than people bargained for coming into this year. I know I had them at number nine coming into this season in, in my personal power rankings that I publish every single week between my ears. And, uh, you know, I, I think Calgary has an opportunity here to stomp down an opponent that is already kind of, you know, on bended knee. So uh, I think it's going to be a very, very physical, um, intense football game because it's two teams that are headed in opposite directions right now. 
And I think they're both desperate football teams. Roddy, how, how many games have we seen between the Blue Bombers, led by Mike O'Shea, and the Stampeders, led by Dave Dickinson, where they have fought tooth and nail against each other and, and just, you know, absolutely tried to murder each other on the football field? I see Saturday afternoon as a game that, uh, or Saturday night rather, is a game that is going to be a really, really entertaining football game. However, it shakes out. I, I can't wait for it. Yeah, I don't think they like each other very much. <laughs> That's the Never sense have. that I get. I don't think you get over these things. <laughs> the friggin' Canadian mafia. Blah, blah. Which, by the way, Dickinson's now Canadian. But, um, hey, just a shout-out for Bonfire Sports for those that are wanting extra coverage. Would you mind telling our viewers where they can find it? Yeah, bonfiresports.ca is our website. You'll find links to everything, but we really do live on YouTube. You can find us in your podcast app, and then, of course, uh, on Facebook and Twitter and all those sorts of things, all our socials, Instagram as well, Bonfire WPG. Uh, we're going to be doing lots of CFL-wide stuff once I get some uh, some things in order, but uh, live pregame and postgame, every single Bombers game with the legend Chris Walby joining me for the pregame show. Uh, it's always lots of fun. Appreciate that, Roddy. Very good stuff. And now, if you don't mind, look, we have people writing in here, have had people writing in here talking about the Jets and what they're going to look like in training camp. I'm like, I'm not there yet. So chill out. But I also get the Winnipeg hockey scene. Long off season for them, man. Long, longer than they planned. What's your, what's your take on the Jets as we sit here today? Yeah, n no doubt it was longer than they planned. And I loved how Mike McIntyre of the Winnipeg Free Press put it. The, the Winnipeg Jets had the dubious distinction of losing to the team, the Colorado Avalanche in the first round, that lost to the team, being the Dallas Stars, who lost to the team, being the Edmonton Oilers, who lost to the team that won the Stanley Cup, the Florida Panthers. So every single team that beat Winnipeg ended up losing in the next round. So that, that's that dubious uh, honor they have. Big questions in Winnipeg. Uh, new head coach in Scott O'Neill, who had been the associate coach under Rick Bonus the last couple of years, as Bonus, uh, you know, moves on from his uh, illustrious career coaching. And will Scott O'Neill be the voice this team needs? Uh, I'll cut right to it, Roddy, because we could talk about you know Nikolai Ehlers and and the defense core and adding pieces and free agency and trades and all that. It all really doesn't matter. This Winnipeg Jets team. It matters, but it matters less than this. This Jets team, through my eyes and the eyes of people I've, I've spoken with, they have no drivers, no drivers on the ice, no drivers inside the locker room. And when the first and only head coach that I can remember in any pro sport quit mid-season, that being Paul Maurice with the Winnipeg Jets a few years ago, I don't know when any, any time that has happened, he decided to leave the team and said, my message is not landing. They need a new voice. When he wins the Stanley Cup the other night, not only did he give a, a nod to the Winnipeg Jets, and he said, if I could only have one thing more, it would be for the Winnipeg Jets to win the next Stanley Cup. He clearly loved his time in Winnipeg and loved the organization um, and, and still has a lot of relationships here. But it's that the way he talks about the Florida Panthers, he said, this isn't me and the coaching staff. I arrived here in Florida and... He said, these guys are different. They love each other. They play for each other. I don't know about, you know, if it's fair or whatever, but all I could hear was what Florida has, Winnipeg does not have. As far as continuity and chemistry, I should say chemistry inside the locker room and drivers, when it came down to it in the playoffs, when they got punched, they couldn't get back up. And I just don't know if the chemistry and the makeup inside that locker room and on the ice as it is today is going to be a winner long term unless they make some serious changes and find somebody something beyond a great leader in adam lowry beyond that to kick this team in the rear when they need it because i see no drivers on this team Great analysis. Les Lazaruk, whom you would know, the veteran Blades broadcaster who's from Winnipeg, just said the same thing. Something's missing. And for yeah. their sake, I hope they find it. Darren, thanks for this. Love our chats, man. Great job. Enjoy the football. Always good talking to you, Roddy. Enjoy the week. Darren Bombing of Bonfire Sports, Winnipeg.